Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and you're probably wondering why I'm bent down like this. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so this is like a secondary or supplemental part to my uh, Deep Cool Maelstrom 120EX RGB unboxing, which you can see if you click on the link up here. Now this is going to be how we actually install it. So we're going to install this on a AM4 motherboard, and we're going to use all the fitting kit here. So I'm going to walk you through how the process is done, and I'm going to be using the Cooler Master, Cooler Master Master Box Light 3.1 case, because it has a uh, pretty much terrible airflow and cooling characteristics so hopefully this is going to help out so let's get on with it <laughs> okay so this is all the bits we're going to be using to install this with the AM4 setup so we've got our Maelstrom 120 EX RGB pump and fan assembly there's the RGB fan got the screws there, long screws to put the fan into the radiator, the small screws to attach the radiator to the back of the case. That's the rest of the AM4 and AM3 mounting equipment. Uh, we won't be using any of that left in there. So all we've had to take out of that pack is the small countersunk screws to attach the brackets to the base and also the thumb screws to then attach the base to the standoffs which are those. So to give you an idea of what's going on, let's give you a close up on the instructions so you can have a look what I'm doing. Okay, so here's the instructions and this is basically what we're gonna have to go through. So the top line there is for AM3 plus uh, and all the others. AM4 is this bottom line down here. So first of all, we have to remove the plastic lugs from the motherboard, if you haven't done already for the uh, Wraith Stealth cooler or any of the Wraith type coolers. So then what we need to do is put the standoffs, which are these, put the standoffs, in, screw them into the back plate, and then we need to attach the brackets here using the countersunk screws, which are those, and that goes into the base of the pump. And then all we do is put the pump onto the cooler, uh, onto the CPU, and then tighten up the thumb screws. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, the other part of this is attaching the fan to the rear of the case. So literally it's just same procedure as if you were putting a 120 mil fan into the back of your uh, chassis so that's pretty straightforward and obviously mounting the fan to the radiator so let's get on and do some of this okay so first things first what we need to do is take these long screws and put them into the fan to attach the fan to the radiator now it's probably a good idea at this point to work out your cable routing so I'm going on the principle that heat rises, so I'm going to try and have the pipes at the bottom. So the cool air will come out, and sorry, the cool water will come out, hot air will go in and rise to the top and create a circular pattern. Hopefully my physics lessons have paid off. So we've got these little tiny screw holes here, which need to be screwed into from the fans. So let's go ahead and put a couple of screws in. So I suggest when you tighten them up to start with, don't do them uh, super tight, just, uh, just so they're snug. And then when you've managed to get the rest of the screws in, you can then go around and uh, cinch them all in a little bit more. So there's our fan connected to the radiator. I think that looks pretty nice already. So next thing we can do is to attach the brackets to the CPU base. Okay, so now it's time to put the screws into the base, or the brackets into the base. So basically they fit on there using these little screws. Now the actual bracket is uh, countersunk, so they do fit in quite nicely. Okay, so we've got one screw in, let's get the other screw in there on this side. Once 
once you've got both screws in, you can then go ahead and tighten them both up a little bit just to make sure they're secure. And then repeat the process for the other side. It feels like this has been machined really well, actually. There's quite a, uh, a satisfying kind of uh, a fit on the countersunk screws. When, they, when they're done up tight, you feel it all kind of pull together nicely which is a sign of good engineering. Now talking of good engineering, uh, Deep Cool offer pretty good warranties on this depending uh, where you live, uh, but it's not unusual to see a two or three year warranty. Okay, so that is the uh, brackets attached to the pump assembly. So now we need to prepare the PC to accept all this gear. So let's go to the PC. Okay, so we're back to the PC side of things now. So let's shut down the computer. And at the moment we've got the uh, the Wraith Stealth, I will struggle with that, There's so many Wraith coolers, the Spire, the etc, etc. But this is the Wraith Stealth, so that is currently installed using AMD's own uh, preferred mounting mechanism, which is the, uh, the plate on the back. So I've already removed the plastic lugs from the previous, well, from the motherboard, and there's the screw. So if you haven't done that already and you've got, you're using that kind of mounting setup, then you need to remove those. There is the wreath stealth, so we're going to remove that now. Okay, so there is the uh, the wreath stealth removed. So just throw that away or set fire to it or something. No, actually, I'm telling like these actually aren't too bad considering they're a stock cooler. AMD have done us proud with these. The even the overclocked Ryzen 2200G in here still stays well, within operating temperatures, just about. So now that we've got access to the uh, CPU, it's probably got a time to remove some of the heat paste from the previous installation. So the next thing to do is to install the double-ended screw into the backplate. These go in coarse thread first. And they're designed so that they only fit in one way. So that's the uh, thumb screws put onto the base plate or back plate or whatever you want to call it. So next thing to do is to clear some room for the fan. So I've already got a Asia Horse fan, which uh, you can check out the review on the Asia Horse fan. Click on the link up here. Uh, pretty nice fans, but unfortunately because of where it is, it's going to have to go. Now the fan has to come out and it has to be unplugged from the fan header. Now this fan header will be used uh, with the water cooler for the actual RGB fan. So you use your CPU header, which is at the top of your board, which is what the Wraith Stealth was attached to. That is what powers the pump itself. And the fan is controlled by one of your chassis headers. So before you go ahead and buy one of these, make sure that your motherboard has additional chassis headers or you're gonna to need to buy yourself a, um, a splitter cable so you can run both off of one port. So the next part of this process is to mount the fan assembly into the chassis. Using the four screws, attach the uh, radiator to the back of the chassis. Be careful not to over tighten the screws because this is a, uh, a machined piece of metal so if you over tighten the screws you will thread it. Once you've got all four screws in go around and make sure you take up any slack in any of the screws due to the metal pressing against metal. Again don't over tighten it you will thread it. So now is probably a good time to connect up the PWM fan header to the motherboard. And luckily it's already been cable tied up already, so that's kind of a nice thing already. So let's go ahead and plug that in. Okay, so that is the fan and radiator assembly attached to the back of the chassis. And we've connected up our system fan header to the RGB fan. So the next bit is the nicest bit of all, is to actually get this pump attached to the system. 
Okay, so this is the uh, the best part, and I did actually make a bit of a schoolboy error. I looked at the instructions in my mind, and I didn't take any notice of them. So these brackets actually will fit on uh, top to bottom and left and right. So if you want to, uh, for instance, if you've got a, quite a distance to travel, you can actually move these brackets around to give you a little bit more length on the pipes, which is quite a nice feature. So the brackets will fit on both ways. So if you look at the actual pump assembly, there is a uh, deep cool logo on it. So if you look at it, that's the orientation of the pump. And that gives you the fan header coming out at the top and the pipes at the bottom. So bear that in mind when you're doing the clips up and don't do what I did. So what we need to do now is put the assembly onto the pins which are sticking out of the motherboard and connect up the fan head, uh, connect up the pump header to the CPU header. And we're going to be using these uh, thumb screws to attach it. Now when you're attaching these you may want to apply a small amount of pressure to the back of the motherboard just to make sure that the, uh, the pins stick out far enough. And also it's a good idea to try and attach them in a crisscross manner. A magnetic screwdriver is also handy in this instance. Go around after and make sure all the screws are nice and tight. Don't over tighten them. I don't think you can because it's metal to metal. And the last part is to attach the fan header to the CPU header. A little bit of cable management won't go amiss, but uh, let's just make sure it works. You can play around with the cables, and the pipes rather, and orientate them how you wish. And being that they are flexible, you can put them pretty much wherever you want. But I like pipes, so let's have them sticking out. So the next thing to do is to uh, turn it on and make sure it all works. And it definitely does. pushing out quite a bit of air. Oh, there's supposed to be an LED logo on that. Okay, we're back in, and now I was a little bit concerned when I turned it on first of all because I was pretty sure, relatively confident, that the uh, the center face logo was supposed to kind of pulse to, to make sure the fan was working to give you some kind of visual feedback. Now I've gone into the MSI Click BIOS fan monitor and I've changed the fan settings back to default and it appears that my previous fan settings uh, didn't work particularly well with this as standard. So in order for the breathing face to come on, the fan RPM has to be at a certain level, otherwise it doesn't register and obviously the fan doesn't breathe. That's oh, right, the, uh, the face was, doesn't give you the breathing effect. So I've gone and reset it now. I've also reset all the fans to the default settings and we've got a temperature on the CPU at the moment of 33 degrees in BIOS, which is uh, Pretty good, it's actually quite warm in here today comparatively from when I reviewed the uh, Cooler Master 2 and 2 LED and also the Gamax 400. It was about 3 or 4 degrees cooler and we were getting CPU temperatures at idle of about 28 to 30 degrees. So it's a few degrees warmer today, so that kind of makes sense. I was a little bit disappointed when I first turned it on thinking it should be cooler than that, but a few degrees, well, 8 to 10 degrees above ambient is, uh, is pretty good in my book. So you can see now that the fan set up and you can see the RGB fan cycling through its colors, which looks pretty nice. Let's give you a zoom in on that. So on the close up, you can see the fan cycling through the colors and it's actually the RGB effect on it is really nice and it glows really nicely through the blades. At the moment, there's a bright sunlight coming through the window and also we've got kind of like studio type lamps in here. So it is really bright and compared to with the, uh, the rest of the lighting we've got in the room. And you can still make out the uh, the breathing skull face type thing, whatever it is, in the middle of the uh, pump, and it looks pretty good. 
So I just put the, uh, the side panel back on so you can see what it looks like through a uh, tempera glass style window. Okay, so that's with the side panel back on. So let's give you a bit of a close up on that. And it still looks, uh, still looks pretty damn good. It still stands out from the crowd. So next thing I'm gonna do is go into uh, the computer and we'll do some Prime 95 and see what temperatures we can get. Okay, so we've got the system on and as you can see, we are idling at 31 degrees, which again, it's quite warm in here today. So that's a pretty damn good temperature. So let's put some uh, Prime 95 on and we'll run the small FFTs and see if we can generate some heat. So we're rising up, getting up to, <laughs> rising up, get it. Uh, we're up to 66 degrees, it's only just started. So that's a pretty good example of uh, the system under load. And currently the auxiliary CPU, uh, the auxiliary fans up to 1300 RPM. The main CPU fan is at 2200 and it is pretty much silent still. Okay, so that's been a uh, brief introduction on how to install the Deepcool Maelstrom 120EX RGB. I'll put some links in the uh, description below so you can click on those if you want to get yourself one. But I'm pretty impressed and um, price wise, I haven't really discussed price much because it's only just come out in the UK and um, there is a lot of competition from things like Cooler Master, etc. At the moment, I found it on Amazon for $54.99, which is a little bit steep for what it is at the moment, but it is brand new out. So I would expect to see some reductions in price pretty soon. But even still, against the, uh, the Cooler Master Liquid 120, which is around about 45 to 50 pounds, but not RGB, I think this is a pretty good buy, especially if you like your RGB fans, which an RGB fan on its own, you're looking about 10, 15 pounds, depending on what fan you go for. So I think the, the value is actually there. Okay, so this has been Mike, Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. This has been the Deep Cool Maelstrom 120EX RGB. Uh, hopefully we'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.